Well, here's our part. Now, I have a really nice piston fit on this. I just polished it. I cut it to length first, and then I just cleaned up, faced off, chamfered, and just polished the end a little bit. And we came out with a perfect piston fit there. Uh, it's just real, real nice. Now this is an inch and a half in diameter, and I want to put a taper pin in here. Now I have a number, this is a number four taper pin, and I'm going to show you how I figured that out, what size it is. And you need to have a tapered hole for a taper pin. They have to be just right in their in their taper as far as the length goes and the fit. You you want these to fit right. So you have to use a tapered hole. And how far you put the taper pin in, you don't want it to stick out too much on the other side and and all that stuff. So figuring this out ahead of time is really helpful on what size hole to drill and what size reamer to use. Now I have some uh, this is these are the right size, these two reamers. Now I have two types of reamers here. Uh, and one's a straight flute reamer, and this is a spiral fluted reamer. In this, in this here, we'll have two pieces would we'll be reaming at the same time, and there's a joint. Um, so joints uh, are, can be kind of tough on reamers. Uh, straight flute reamers are not as tolerant to crossing holes or joints as much as a, a spiral flute is much more tolerant of that because uh, the, of the way it cuts at an angle instead of straight on like this. Well, we'll see which one is going to work out best for us. Uh, I have the right size for both in both styles, so uh, we'll just have to see how this all goes. But we'll, we'll talk about that. Let's look at the uh, information, we text information that you should know about and how to, how to read it. This is the uh, Engineer's Black Book. These are great books to have in the shop for referencing. Uh, they're very well made. There's great information. And uh, I just like, I love how they're, the page is the paper they used. Anyway, this, this is the page on taper pins. And they, they have some uh, good information here. Uh, tell you what the taper is, the angle. Uh, taper per inch of the diameter and a little diagram. This is uh, over here is the size, taper pin size by their, their numbers. Uh, the basic pin diameter, which is the large end, which you would measure. So I measured the large end here right at the end. And it's a quarter of an inch. And then they have some other numbers here. These are the commercial class fit ones and precision class of of the taper pins and this is one thousand tolerance uh, there and a three thousand tolerance on those so you know these would fit obviously much nicer and then the crown radius which I don't know why they have that there the the information you really need is the small end diameter uh, is m more helpful uh, but here they have the formula to calculate the small end diameter all right, so that's about it in here. Uh, let's go to the machinery's handbook and talk a little bit. The machinery's handbook, uh, mine is a 17th edition. So I'm on page 1421, uh, if that helps anybody, which it probably doesn't. Uh, anyway, this here is about the standard taper pin reamers right here. Uh, straight and fly spiral flute, and then square shanked high speed steel, uh, high spiral flutes and round shanks. They're talking about them all. And so we already determined by measuring the high, big end of the pin, we determined what size pin it was. It was a four, number four taper pin. So we need a number four tapered reamer. And it tells me the, the large end of the reamer. This is reamer specification. So it's about 260. The uh, small end is 207, and the length, and, and the types of flute, the lengths of the flute, and all that stuff. So this is just about the reamer. This page is, is more, these pages here are probably more important than any, anything else uh, of real information you, you want to know. 
right here, it, this from here to here is the drilling specifications for our tapered pin. And they have some nice diagrams about step drilling and, and fit and, ha and how, you, how you proceed with the drilling. This is a nice chart here that is uh, very, very helpful and pretty, pretty, actually pretty easy to read and, and understand. So we have a number four taper pin, large end diameter, which is right here, pin diameter, is a quarter of an inch. And then there's this dark line. Now these numbers over here are drill sizes. And up here is the length of the pin. So our pin length is an inch and a half. Quarter inch diameter, and it's an inch and a half. So we'll go to the inch and a half crossing line, follow it down, where it crosses over this dark line for the number four taper pin. See, there's number four there. And it ends up right, right here on this line at 219. So 0.219. So that is the size hole I need to drill for the, this taper pin. Now, if you have a longer taper pin, then it's usually recommended to use step drilling technique to help in the removal of the materials, especially with a straight flute reamer. Um, uh, spiral flute reamers, you can get away with a little bit more, uh, but straight flute reamers, you, you really need to step drill. So they have these dots along these lines. So if, if, if your size of your pin falls between the first two dots, you just read directly the size of the hole, and so in this case 219, and I only need to do one drill. If there's, if there's three dots, or down here there's, there's four dots on these bigger pins, it tells you that if, if your size falls between the second and third dot, you need two drills. If it was between the third and the fourth dot, you need three drills. So let's say we have a as an example, we'll just say we have a three inch number four pin. We would come up here to three inches, read across, and it's at 172. So that's my smallest drill I would drill all the way through with. And then half the distance, because I'm only using two drills, half the distance would be come back down here to inch and a half, or from three inch to half the distance would be 219. So I would drill half the distance of the hole at 219. And I would form a, a single step. Now these larger pins, you would do like a three pin, uh, you know, with those four dots. So you'd use a three drills and you would do a third instead of a half. And that, and you read, read over and you would end up with three drills and you would drill a third of the way in out. So it's really pretty simple. So in our case, we need to drill a 219 hole all the way through, or through hole all the way through. And then we do, we'll ream it directly. So that, that this chart is really, really helpful. Now, back here in the book, there is a section on the taper pins also. And it has a similar information to the engineer's black book. But they also show you the difference in cone end angle and, and such. Um, and if you had a split taper and things like that. But we're using a solid taper pin with dome ends. Uh, and, and it, it's just some more information, but it, it, you don't really need to use this right now for what we're going to do. Uh, but over here, it does help you. It tells you what the small end diameter directly is uh, on this chart. And that's what I was saying before. If you knew the small end diameter, that's a, if you're using a single drill method, that's all you really need to know. So for an inch and a half pin, a number four pin, it goes over here, it's 219. And that's what we got off our chart, 219. So that, that small end diameter is, is a critical information. So now we know our drill size of 219, and we know, our, we know, our, we know what reamers we're going to use. And uh, we just need to pick a location of where we're going to do this. I'm probably just going to... Uh, this does not go all the way through there, of course. This only comes down that far, so I'm probably going to split the difference right there. So it's probably going to be right about in here. And uh, we'll put our pin in. So we're going to go over to the mill now and get this done. 
All right, this is how we're going to set this up. A uh, big thick parallel on the bottom just to kind of raise it up a little bit. I'm going to set that in there. I use a couple of these 3 8 blocks, uh, fireball tool setup blocks. We'll put one on each side of the shaft. And that's what the gap should be on each side. If this is a half and the shaft is three quarters, and we're going to set that up so it's kind of level. That's going to work out just right. I have edge found the back edge. I came over halfway and I edge found this. It came over so that I'm about halfway on my shaft. Uh, as far as how much sticking in there, right? Uh, so it's about a half an inch in from the end of the shaft, actually. So that should be that should be good. I slid my parallel back so I will not drill into it. Now I just scooch this out so I can have clearance with the taper pin uh, reamer as it goes through here. Lots of oil. Lots of oil. and check often. You know, it just, here, I, I've hardly done anything, but, so I've hardly removed anything, and let's just, we'll just see how much that goes in there. Look at that. I hardly did anything. And that's almost there already. Quite. Well, actually, that's probably, that is probably done. <laughs> well, that it didn't take much to, to cut that. It was just, just the reamer's nice and sharp, and it's going to be there. A little tap and put her down flush, and I think we'll be fine. Shoot. That's how easy that was. Uh, you know, drilling the prescribed hole, and so you don't have to, it doesn't remove too much material. It's very slight taper. Uh, so that just cut that just nice and slick. All right, it's right there at this end. This is the other side. No movement whatsoever. I'll tap that a little tight. and uh, Actually, I might even just put a light Loctite on it or something like that just in just to really hold it in there. You can always knock it out if you have to knock it out. Matter of fact, I'll deburr that edge a little bit. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a little, just a little bit of blue Loctite on it. So of course dirt's in there already. Well that's, slips in there good. That's maybe a little too far even, huh? Alright, tapped it in tight. And we ended up a little bit sticking out. I think I went a little deep with the spotting drill, uh, so my end ended, this end ended up being a little a quarter of an inch, and of course the end of the pin's quarter of an inch, so it went a little deeper. Uh, yeah, I should have should have watched that a little more careful. But other than that, it fits perfect and it's absolutely tight. Maybe I'll have to get a number five taper pin and I could read, you know, I could I could ream this hole a little bit bigger and put a bigger pin in, but that, this will work just fine. Let's put the vise together. Yep, yeah, I, t I ended up having to take this all apart, so it's uh, still a little bit dirty. Hmm. Anyway, that, the flat there was on the bottom, I think. 
goes in there. Then these screws, these come and go in the side. Uh, you probably have seen about a hundred videos uh, on uh, YouTube about putting together a Wilton vise, you know, or restoring them. There's, seems like everybody's done one. And uh, this cap goes in the end there. Well, I don't need to put it in there quite yet. <laughs> now, I, I squirted a bunch of whey oil in there um, to lubricate this. Should work pretty good. And it was handy. Very, very nice. <laughs> the heads were screwed up on here, so I put in some uh, aircraft screws. <laughs> These are stainless uh, 1032s. Put some whey oil on this for now. Let me get whey oil over everything. Oh. Goes in perfect. Should do a retrofit where you put a bearing in there, a thrust bearing would be nice. There we go. Oh, these heads, ooh. These heads might be too big. Ooh. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay, a quick trip to the Logan and we reduced the head size and let's see. Well, that feels good. It's not hitting that. There. Works works great. See it now, three quarter socket will go on there. Okay, we have our modified vise. Now we'll get busy on the, the next thing will be uh, the adapter plate that's on the welding table. All right, thanks you guys. Thanks for watching this uh, vise modification. Came out great, uh, really. Uh, we might have to. We'll make our pin maybe look a little better, but that's an aesthetics thing. It, functionality is perfect. The shaft came. It was fun figuring out the odd thread that was in here and being able to get that made just right. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, all that good stuff. Click that notification bell. And if you're interested in Patreon, please check that out. Me. I put the cap in, I put it in, but I had to polish it first. Made it look much better. And there's the old one. I didn't throw it away. I saved it. I save everything, it seems like.